Hey folks, and welcome back to the least knowledgeable sim racing channel. A few nights ago, I polled you guys asking whether you would like to see a direct comparison between my two main Fanatec rims, namely the McLaren GT3 to the venerable Formula V2. The vast majority responded in the positive saying that you would like to see a comparison, however several caveated it by saying that you would rather wait and have me hold off until the insane BMW M4 GT3 rim comes out later in the year. Now I can tell you, given the price range that this product is slated to be in, it's not going to be much of a comparison. It stands to cost several times more than both of these combined, so it's going to be a very, very different thing for a very, very different tier of market. So we'll wait for it to come out until we do that feature video. For the time being, let's just compare the McLaren GT3 to the Formula V2 and find out which one might be best for you. The CSL Elite Steering Wheel McLaren GT3 V2, yes, that's its actual full product name, might be time to get the business managers to streamline that product ecosystem, hey Fanatec. Anyway, the McLaren GT3 rim, as we'll call it henceforth, is a full-scale replica of the wheel used in the McLaren 650S GT3 race car. It's based on the original CAD data from the car's wheel, so dimensionally it's virtually identical. It's a slightly reworked version of the V1 wheel, released by Fanatec some years ago. It features a redesigned shifter mechanism with a longer throw, and is finished with a single aluminium rocker paddle, meaning you can shift up and down with either hand. The wheel also comes with two additional analog paddles, which are commonly used for clutching, but can also be used for hand braking or controlling the braking and throttle with your hands. It has two toggle switches, nine buttons, a multi-function funky switch in the bottom left, three large rotary encoders and a one-inch OLED display. The control layout is almost exactly the same as the actual race car wheel and the functions of each control can be custom mapped. The McLaren GT3 rim comes in at an RRP of $199.95 United States dollars, though it should be said that it only comes with a plastic quick release system. To upgrade it with the metal quick release system you get with the Formula V2 costs an additional $99.95. Bear in mind, that's half the price of the wheel again, just to get the quick release system up to spec. The Club Sport Steering Wheel Formula V2, a little verbose but still better than the McLaren, is currently still Fanatec's premier wheel rim. At least, until the release of the upcoming BMW M4 GT3 rim for substantially greater cost. The Formula V2 rim comes with a smorgasbord of features, ensuring you'll never have to reach for your keyboard for those auxiliary controls. It consists of a 5mm thick, solid carbon fibre base overlaid with 11 buttons, two thumb encoders, three rotary encoders, a multi-purpose funky switch, and analog thumbstick. This is peppered off with programmable rev and indicator LEDs and a 1-inch OLED display. The base, of course, comes inbuilt with two paddle shifters that are extremely tactile and responsive. Unlike the McLaren GT3 rim, it also contains vibration motors in the handles for additional force feedback effects, and comes with a metallic quick-release system. Unlike the McLaren rim, however, it does not come with an additional set of programmable analog pedals to use as a hand clutch, handbrake, or brake and throttle. For this functionality, you need to shell out an additional $179.95 USD, which is on top of the wheel's base RRP of $369.95 USD. Now, with the feature list out of the way, let's get into a simulator and talk through their pros and cons as we drive. We're starting with the McLaren GT3 rim first. So we're here at Brands Hatch in ACC, and I'll start by telling you guys what my button mapping is for the standard GT3 simulator. So up here, we've got flashes. The N actually cycles through my overlays, including the pit menu. The toggle switch here toggles the wipers and the headlights. This actually controls my engine mixture. This controls the ABS. This controls the engine starter and ignition. The giant P is the pit limiter, believe it or not. This over here is my push to talk function on Discord. The A and the B is the brake bias plus or minus, and we've got the TC up or down on the X and Y here as well. The funky switch down here doubles back as a D-pad in the menus, also it pauses the game or pushes forward in menus. And this down here is a very quick uh, camera toggle. Now this over here, as you can probably see it toggling through, 
represents how the mappable analog axes function. So the first point is the clutch bite point. This is where I keep it personally. You've also got clutch there and handbrake there. You've also got the brake and throttle control in case you don't have access to pedals or perhaps if you're handicapped, that makes it a very, very good solution to not need to use your legs. And moving one more forward, we've turned it into mappable analog axes, meaning you can assign them to whatever you want within the title itself. So let's get started on the actual the driving. So red light, red light. Go, go, go. pit limiter in, giant P, start the engine here. Nice and easy. Scroll through our menus until there's nothing in the way. Jensen button, of course, giving it a change from the other JB, James Baldwin. So we've got the other one going on this time. It's first gear and out we go. Low tire pressure. Stay clear of the curbs. <laughs> you don't say, mate. All right, I'm going to have to take it easy on the first couple of laps as we kind of talk through how the McLaren GT3 rim feels. So immediately the first sensation I get is the sense of just ease and comfort with the wheel rim itself. It just fits my hands beautifully. I feel perfectly in control of the car. I really cold tires aside, so the car's dancing everywhere. It's kind of over and under steering at the same time, but none of that is due to the rim, of course. Whoa, so much, so much crazy understeer on the braking as we really try to get some warmth into these tires. So the sensation is great. It feels great through my karting gloves as well. I get a really good grip on the wheel. I can run substantially high force feedback on it and still fight against it because I get really good leverage in the hand grips. The main disadvantage that hits you is the feeling of the shifters. So the shifting is nowhere near as good as the feel of the Formula V2. It's not particularly tactile. It's not particularly engaging. It's somewhat laborsome on the finger and can actually cause a bit of fatigue over time. I'll say that the shifters are by far the worst part of the entire wheel's design. If you can overlook that, I would say that um, you have a very, very good GT rim here. Now, we're still not up to temp, but I'm going to give it a bit more of a spirited run this time as we actually get onto some curbs. As you can see, the rim in no way holding back my driving. <laughs> Unfortunately, the ride height of the McLaren makes it very susceptible to uh, hitting curbs the wrong way. So as you can see, the OLED display is showing me when to shift, as well as the speed of the car, as well as what gear we're in. Unlike the Formula V2, it doesn't actually have any rev LEDs, so you've got to look on the screen. Gives you just enough mid-corner information to actually make the turns work. Even in a game engine with not the most detailed force feedback, such as ACC, it gives you just what you need in order to drive on the limit. As we try and go in for a proper lap for once. got to say that the size of the wheel room is absolutely perfect. The hand grip's perfect. You can tell that this was designed for an actual GT3 driver to be used in an actual GT3 car. It just makes sense. Unfortunately, my driving does not, but as you can see, the wheel helped me save that. No problem at all. It shouldn't have had to, but here we are. <laughs> so if you're driving impaired like I am, Great wheel. As you can see, keeps you in rotation, lets you maintain the slide.
And for a bumpy circuit such as Brands Hatch, it just gives you all the road detail that you need in order to put your laps together. Right, so what I might try and do is actually put together a competent lap here. Not a good start on T1, but it's alright. We'll make do. If we can at least get into the low 123s. Let me show you guys what this room is about, if you actually have skill. Alright, so far so good. That's the corner where I tend to throw it all away. Obviously, the one major drawback to this rim is the shifters, as we spoke about, but also the lack of vibration motors in the handles. So you don't get the same kind of cues that you do when the TC kicks in, when the ABS kicks in, as you would from the Formula V2. ACC is very well programmed for that rim in particular. Since their development team actually use it to develop with, As we push out to maybe a high 122, maybe. All right, I'll take it. <laughs> Close to my personal best. So as you can see, if you're at my skill level, I mean, this wheel will not hold you back at all. If anything, it'll probably help make you faster. You get great leverage over the wheel. You get great sense of control. Even when you get a pivoting mid-engine car like the McLaren here, you always feel in control of what's going on and it's absolutely beautiful to deal with. And now with the Formula V2, let's run through the button mapping. All right, so we start here. Thanks, mate. We start here with the flashes. We go through here where I don't actually have anything bound at the moment. This is my left indicator, my right indicator. This is super handy if you're being overtaken. Maybe you're driving a multi-class race in a GT4. You want to signal your intention. Very, very handy for that sort of thing. This button here is my look back. This over here, as before on the McLaren rim, is my push to talk via Discord. So the thumb encoder here I use for brake bias, thumb encoder here I use for traction control. I like to sometimes dynamically change that on the fly during the lap. This over here is my engine map. This over here is my ABS. Uh, this over here should be cycling through the various overlays, including the pit menu, but I don't have it bound for the time being. So this is usually where I do... So if we were an R factor, this would be my pit call-ins because there's no pit call-ins in ACC. It kind of just goes through the menus. The A is the pit limiter, as you can see up there. Uh, as before with the McLaren room, the toggle switches do the exact same thing. So wipers down here. We've got the headlights over here. I'll just cycle through the wipers. And this will be the engine ignition, as you can hear. The... Funky switch toggles through the actual HUD in the car itself, as well as through the menus, and it's also my next button as well. And this, as before on the McLaren rim, cycles through the feature set on the additional analog axes, but as I don't actually have the advanced paddle module, that doesn't really come in handy for anything because I don't have the additional paddles back here. Uh, this cycles through the various HUDs in the game for me, just in case I want to get rid of the HUD, I want to do like a really clean take for a video or something like that. And this over here cycles through the various camera views. And this, of course, gets back into my menu. So with that said, let's try this wheel out in a couple of laps. So the first thing... Stay clear of the curbs. He loves to talk over me, doesn't he? So the very first thing that you feel with this rim, the very first thing... <laughs> well, the very first thing that you see, actually, is the fact that it's far more vibrant. As you can see, these LEDs are just going crazy letting me know what the car is doing at any given moment. And man, my, I'm, I'm way over pressing the shifters because they're way, way easier to press on this wheel. They're way quicker. They're way more tactile. They're just, they feel nicer. I've got to say the grips, the hand grips actually do feel nicer. Even though they do fatigue my hands after a while on this rim, it's just a, it's a much finer finish than the McLaren rim. I'm finding the wheel is far easier to rotate. It's easier to catch rotations in some way as well because it's far smaller. So everything is more pinpointy and pivoty. Uh, it's one of the reasons that I tend to like using this rim for hot lapping. I'll do my short sprints with it. 
I'll get my times and then I'll leave it alone for the endurance races where I need my hands to be comfortable for long periods of time. Now you can see it's telling me exactly when I should shift. It's also indicating when the TC kicks in, when I have tire slip. It's absolutely amazing for the telemetry being fed out to it. I'm very, very fond of all this going on here. The OLED display for the most part is much the same as it is on the McLaren. And I suppose we'll see over the next couple of laps how quickly I take to the wheel itself and what the lap times look like compared to the McLaren. Bearing in mind the tyres are still cold as I can feel through, <laughs> through the wheel here. Yes, we're still not up to temp. Brands Hatch being a very short circuit, so you usually tend to need about two or three laps to get it going. But it, the immediate feeling is that you're using something more premium than the McLaren rim. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can feel the price difference in the product. Now, I'm not entirely sure if I still have the vibration motors on. I'm um, working, but I know that they should be. So whenever you kick in the ABS, you should be feeling it through the vibration motors. I think I can actually, even when I went off road there, I could feel the vibration through the hand grips. Very handy, gives you that additional layer of horse feedback. And with the Fanalab software, you can basically tweak it all to your heart's content. I just leave the default telemetry output from the game because I feel like the devs do a really good job for this room. ACC probably has the best support for this room out of any sim that I've played. That's one of the reasons I'm actually trying it here. It's very, very fully fledged, very fully featured. I don't have to go into Fanalab and program it myself. Now that we're almost up to temp, let's go in and see what we can do. Uh, still very finicky, but it's alright. I feel awkward. I feel awkward there, I have to say. It's just the wheel is too small. My hands just feel like they're, they're contorted or something. My arms just aren't really reacting all that well to it. And that's why I lost that second corner. I was expecting to have the same level of leverage over the rim that I did with the McLaren. So I'm already finding it impacting the driving experience in a slightly negative way due to the size. And to me, that size is probably the biggest negative about this rim. I would kill for it to be two inches larger. <laughs> That's what she said. As we go through here, it's it's okay. I'm getting it, I'm getting it. it. There's a bit of an adjustment period coming from the McLaren. As nice as this rim feels in terms of its quality and the, the premium elements, the Alcantara, I don't take to it ergonomically as well in terms of the dimensions more than anything. So my hands are already starting to get a little bit fatigued. It's just not a match made in heaven. All right, let's do this. Let's see what we can do. Can we actually pull off this corner? Very awkward to my arms on this corner. I can't get the same level of control that I could in the McLaren room there. The car's really feeling like it wants to over-rotate on me. I'm having a bit of a tougher time controlling it mid-corner for some reason. It's definitely already beginning to fatigue my hands. My housemate has this exact same problem and he has a very different body shape to me, so bear that in mind when it comes to the Formula V2. Probably for short sprints only. And this will be our last lap as we seem to come in about three to four tenths off our time, about three tenths off our time with the McLaren. So 
you know, that could be down to personal error and inconsistency, but I will tell you that it felt like it was costing me time simply because of how I had to contort my arms over the wheel in order to, to control the car mid-corner through some of those corners. While the wheel does feel very premium, there's way more controls that you can map on it. It's got these amazing LEDs that feed you all the telemetry. At the end of the day, the consistent element that I've realized is driving GT3s, I tend to be a little bit more consistent and a little bit better actually using the cheaper McLaren rim. Summary time. I think after those two playthrough videos, we can safely say that both of them are fairly high quality rims, and which one you want depends on what you prioritize. Where one falls flat, generally the other one takes over, so it really depends on whether you want more controls and more of a feature set versus better ergonomics. So let's start with the McLaren GT3. So the McLaren GT3 is essentially a mid-range rim as far as Fanatec's ecosystem is concerned. It's substantially cheaper than the Formula V2, at least without the metallic quick-release system. And what we have here is an array of controls that essentially let you map just about anything you would want to map onto a rim in a GT3 car. However, it's not quite as feature-packed as the Formula V2. We're lacking the two rotary thumb encoders, we're lacking the analog look-around switch, we're lacking the vibration motors in the handles, we're also lacking the LED uh, rev strip as well as the programmable LED strips that can show things such as ABS kicking in, traction loss, tire lockups, anything that you want essentially. So you're getting less telemetry being fed out to this wheel and less stuff being fed out to you external to the game itself. Beyond that, I would say its greatest advantage is the fact that it's based on the original CAD designs of the McLaren 650S GT3 rim. You can tell it's amazing for long endurance racing sessions. It's great to race GT3 cars in. It's my favorite GT3 rim by far. There's a very, very good tactile sensation with the, the rubber grips. I actually prefer it to the Alcantara on the Formula V2, believe it or not. And it's just a really, really good rim to use for really, really long periods of time. However, that does come caveat it. Its biggest disadvantage is most definitely these shifters. They fundamentally just don't feel very good. It's very rough on the finger, and it's also a bit of a longer throw than I would personally like, and you can probably hear it. So it just doesn't quite have that tactile click. It just doesn't quite have that mm sensation like you've really achieved something when you shift. And I feel like you may actually be losing milliseconds through just simply the way that this thing functions, the amount of resistance it has to the finger, also the fact that it may actually fatigue your finger as it does mine due to its placement and its throw and its general sensation. So I really wish that Fanatec would make uh, an upgrade path for the shifters. I really wish that they would give us something approximating even just the, the stock feel of the Formula V2 shifters, but it's looking like that at least for the foreseeable future, we're not going to get anything like that. Another caveat to this rim is the fact that it fundamentally just kind of feels cheaper than the Formula V2. It feels like a hollow plastic casing that just happens to be overlaid with a, a carbon fiber pattern. It, it just doesn't give you that sensation of, yeah, this is something I would use in a real race car. So the Formula V2 definitely leads on the whole build quality front as well, the tactile sensation of the controls. But if you can look past that, the McLaren GT3 rim is absolutely amazing for endurance racing, for GT3s, most popular kinds of racing, short of possibly modern open wheeler style stuff where you really need to adjust all the controls on the fly. That's where the Formula V2 really has the advantage. Moving on to the Formula V2. You can tell immediately that its profile is far smaller than the McLaren GT3. This is a big caveat because it tends to fatigue the hands, especially if you've got hands the size of mine, and you can probably tell I'm not the smallest guy on the planet, so this does tend to add up. I tend to reserve the Formula V2 primarily for driving modern open wheelers that need an absolute ton of adjustments on the fly, or just for hot lapping in GT3 cars, because it does get rather uncomfortable on both the hands and the shoulders after fairly short periods of time. It's because the wheel itself is so small, you kind of feel scrunched up. For a given force feedback setting, you feel like the car is outputting more to the rim than it is to the McLaren GT3. And while initially that can seem amazing, you're getting all of this detail and tactile feedback, it does add up after a while and actually cause some strain on the body. So my biggest disadvantage for the Formula V2 by far is its size. 
Moving on to the advantages, I mean, you can immediately see them. It just looks better. It has more premium materials being used. You've got Alcantara on the grips here. Now, the unfortunate drawback of that is that you probably want to be using these with some kind of gloves so that you spare the material like I do. You have about the same amount of these rotary switches, two toggles, more buttons, of course. And you've got the D-pad here as well. Uh, you've also got the two thumb encoders, which are amazingly useful if you need to adjust things such as brake bias, TC, engine mixture, anything on the fly, essentially. Beyond that, you've got the programmable LED rev strip up here. It can basically put out whatever color that you want at whatever RPM that you want. You can customize this to whichever car you're driving to be absolutely perfect. You can get them flashing at you at the perfect shift point. You can actually get the, the rim to vibrate once it hits the perfect shift point as well because you've got the, the vibration motors and the handles. Super, super nifty stuff. And it's almost like cheating when it comes to hot lapping and racing online. On top of that, you have the two programmable strips on the side, which can show things such as the TC kicking in, ABS, wheel lockups, I mean, you spinning the rear out, pretty much any kind of telemetry that you want that the sim will actually put out, you can program into those strips. And this was one of those things that revolutionized ACC for me. Games like that, which intrinsically don't have, let's say, the most detailed force feedback, having that telemetry there so you can tell when the CC is kicking in or the ABS is kicking in can actually let you adjust your inputs and the pedals on the fly so that you actually drive more optimally. So that cannot be understated. It's a supremely useful feature of this rim. In fact, if I could roll both of these together into the one ultimate rim, I'd be super happy. That being said, as you guys can probably tell, it's really down to what you prefer. The McLaren GT3 rim for my body type 100% has better ergonomics. I prefer it for longer races and I would say that 70% of the time it ends up being my preferred wheel. I only tend to pull out the Formula V2 when I want the additional feature set. And of course, please do remember that this does come stock with the metallic quick release, whereas on the McLaren GT3 rim, it comes with a plastic quick release and you have to buy the actual metallic one on top, which is the half of the price of the rim again on top. Comparing the shifters very quickly, this is one area where the Formula V2 has a massive advantage. Now, I've never actually used the advanced paddle module, so I don't actually have the magnetic shifters, so I don't have the the analog clutch axes down here as well, but you can just hear the quality immediately. Way more tactile, way better feedback. The throw is better. It's easier to access with your fingers. It's way less fatiguing. That's one area where the Formula V2 is absolutely perfect compared to the McLaren GT3. If we could somehow roll these into the McLaren GT3, it'd be a far better rim. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the review as much as I enjoyed making it. I love comparing these two rims and it's always funny that the things that you find out and the things that you come to realize when you directly AB one piece of gear to another. If you guys are interested in either of these rims, I've got the links down below in my description. If you do take those links and check out via Fanatec's web store, it does help support this channel, so I would appreciate that a lot. If not, no love lost. I'd still heavily appreciate it if you guys click that subscribe button. And until next time, I'll see you later.